I have been working on ripping some of my media again. This is something I only get to do from time to time, and so I do it in small short bursts. This week I've been ripping some of my Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. series on Blu-ray, and of course there is that issue of the episodes aren't actually named when you open them up and make MKV. They're just T00, T01, T04, etc. And so I have been finally looking at a tool that you all have been recommending in the comment section down below to rename and manage the files for uh, my ribs for Plex and get the file names in a more Plex friendly format. We're going to be checking that out in this week's Plex or this month's, I guess, Plex sponsored tutorial. And we'll get into it right after this. After what? Full disclosure, as always, this video series is sponsored by Plex themselves. They do a weekly sponsored video series that I do, or monthly, I keep saying that wrong, a monthly sponsored video series that I run here on the channel. I do have affiliate links that help keep track of how many people I'm pointing places and stuff in the description down below. If you want to sign up for free, buy a Plex Pass or gift someone a Plex Pass if so desired. And we're going to be jumping in here today and taking a look at FileBot. And this is a program, like I said, that you guys have been recommending to me so much it is a tool it does cost $19.99 unfortunately which is kind of steep for something like this it's available in the Windows Store or the Mac App Store but it is pretty handy and I wound up buying it kind of out of desperation to clear up some file names that I had that were too long for Windows to handle and so it was kind of cool checking it out here and what I mean by too long for Windows to handle like when I copy them to my NAS for Plex it renamed the files to some gibberish nonsense because of the file string being too, or the name string being too long. So I needed to get them updated. And so I've been experimenting with it since. Uh, but I just search the Windows Store or Mac App Store for FileBot, or I will have the link to their website in the description down below. It is a fairly straightforward software in terms of actually running it, though. If I go ahead and pull it up from my start menu, it is a Windows UWP app for, since it's from the store. But you just drag in your files. So here I have five episodes from the first disk of. Agents of Sealed Season 1. Drag those into the original files list. Now, here, if you already have episode and or episode like numbering, season and episode, or you have uh, the episode names or something, you're going to have an easier time. And so I could go in here and manually name them. And for some shows, you'll have to, because for some shows, if you open up whatever the first episode it pops up for you may not be the very first episode of the show. And honestly, in this specific instance, I have not actually taken the time to determine which episode is which. I do know that this is the first episode, so I am just kind of relying for the purposes of getting this video out. Relying on the fact that episode 0 here is episode 1, so theoretically, the rest are in order. But you will want to verify that if your disk is a little funky. But drag your files into the original files location, then go over here to Fetch Data. Choose what you're fetching data for, be it movies, anime, TV shows. I'm going to choose the TVDB. And again, if you already have season and episode indicators, then it's going to have an easy time and going to pull it up for you. However, with this show, since it's T00, T01, T02, it gets a little confused. It picks up starting with this as episode one, and then it thinks this is season six, episode one. And it doesn't, it looks like it doesn't even think that this is correct because it honestly isn't. So what we're going to do is go over here to the episodes tab and we're going to type in the search that we're looking for. So agents of shield right here, all seasons, or you can choose a specific season. I'm going to say season one, and then you choose whether it's the air date order, the DVD order, or if there's a, an absolute order that the show abides by. Since this is the DVD order, since it's on Blu-ray, I'm going to click that. And then you choose your language, which for me is English. And then you hit find. It's going to have you double check the show name, agents of shield, bam, episode one, through episode five, Send to, right click, that's a right click, send to, rename. So now it has the correct names in this listing here, and you can customize the format here. If you go to your settings, uh, you can choose whether you preserve or override the file extension in the name. You can, you can do a lot of different options with this software on the whole, but for the basic set, just hit rename. And it's going to say done. And you go back over here. Oh, look at that. One bio one, one bio two, one bio three, one bio four, etc. Now here you have footage of me kind of freaking out and trying to wonder what is going on as I'm playing the episode and realizing that they got renamed out of order. I wasn't sure what was going on during the time of recording. However, going back through editing, I can see that when I hit the match button, which I cut out and 
because I don't want you to hit the match button. The match button basically reorders the rename process based on the file names that exist in your originals. So if you hit match, it's going to take T00 and put it at the end because it, it wants to match T01 with episode 1 and so on. So T00 got moved to the end and so it started with T01 being episode 1 and T00 being T episode or episode 5. And so I'm a little confused here in this video, but that is why avoid the match button unless you already imported things out of order or you know what you're doing and have this in mind as I was trying to hit the match button and was like, oh, it didn't do anything when it's what screwed me up here and kind of set me on a weirdly confused path for like 10 minutes of blank recording here. All right, interestingly enough, it handled the T00, the first episode as the last episode, which I think was part of the reason it was picking it up as a season six episode and so what I had to do here is when I loaded up the episodes into this format and then I went and said send to rename the problem was it was having trouble because the files already exist it can't just rename something of a file that exists but what you can do is you can say edit format of the output and add something to the end so to help recover my own personal mistake that I made in the sake of recording this tutorial real fast I added Vox to the end so that I know that I am the one renaming it. So now if I delete Vox and hit use format, it's going to get rid of that. I hit rename, it's going to rename them. Wham bam, episode one is correctly episode one as you can see by the thumbnail. And I know for a fact that that is the thumbnail for episode five. So theoretically, we should be good to go now. So that is something to look out for. And I will do some more experimenting in the future to confirm how the, uh, the, the T00 thing affects other things. All right, here I have rips of Beavis and Butthead. I borrowed some DVDs from a buddy of mine and ripped them and named them by hand just because I was doing it the manual way, but maybe I don't like how this name is set up. So I can drag these files in here, other than the weird thumbnail generation error Windows has given me lately. Drag them in here, go to fetch data, TVDB. This is an example of what happens if you already have them pre-labeled. It's already, it doesn't even ask me for anything. It knows exactly what is what. And I can go ahead and tell it to rename. Bam. Ready to go. If you have a list of files in your list and you need to get rid of them, click this blue circle and it will clear all of them in the list if you need to start over. If you're trying to rename and an episode has a character that's not acceptable for a file name, such as a question mark, it will pop up asking you to validate the illegal characters. Simply hit validate, it will remove them and then you can hit continue and it will rename the files. So again, the asking price of $20 for such a tool is understandably a lot. However, if you do enough bulk renaming and file management and get a little deeper and hands on with the tool, I definitely think it's worth having in your arsenal for managing your TV shows with Plex. I have gotten lucky thus far and most of the shows that I have ripped have been picked up by Plex with the basic names that I give them, but that has been through manual work. And I have had a few shows that have gone all over the place, which is why I'm taking the time to kind of try to fix this now, because I have a lot of shows that you all have noticed in previous episodes that just aren't detected properly. So links to FileBot will be in the description below, as always, as well as my Plex links, which you should use to sign up. Thank you to Plex for sponsoring this regular series on the channel. If you have any questions or requests for me to cover, you can't see that hand. Check them out or leave them in the comment section down below while you're down there. Hit the like button. Subscribe for more awesome tech content, education, things like that. I'm Impulse Fox here to make tech easier and more fun. And I'll see you next time.